Okay, so in this section, we're going to talk to another area of machine learning. And this is one that's near and dear to my heart because it's actually what I wrote my dissertation on, my PhD dissertation. Uh, and that's on evolutionary computation. Uh, and what is evolution? Let's start with a definition there first. So this is a picture of, of course, the illustrious Charles Darwin. And he described evolution as descent with modification. Merriam-Webster describes it as a process of change in a certain direction, the action or an instance of forming and giving something off, or a process of continuous change from a lower, simpler, or worse to a higher, more complex, or better state. Uh, process of gradual and relatively peaceful social, political, and economic advance, and something uh, evolved, right? Uh, and so these definitions I like because they're all basically what we're going to talk about, which is this idea that we can use the principles of evolution to take a solution to a problem in a machine that doesn't work very well and evolve it to a better solution, right? Now, how, one question you might ask is, does that even make sense, right? Does evolution actually solve any problems? Well, one way to understand evolution is as a system that solves problems over time because individuals that do well will reproduce in proportion to their fish, fitness. Now, I should mention the individual in this context does not necessarily mean animal or human, though that's obviously what Darwin was talking about. Um, and in fact, he didn't even say humans till later, but that gets a dual story, right? Uh, an individual can be an idea, can be a corporation, can be a business plan, right? Things that don't survive don't reproduce, right? Um, they don't continue to carry on. So to some extent, evolution is solving the problem of reproduction. And if we phrase our reproduction problem correctly, right, then we can use it to solve the problems that we want to solve. Um, Natural selection, mutation, and recombination exist in just about every real world dynamical system, right? Natural selection is the idea that the fittest individual survives with a higher probability than a less fit individual. Mutation is the idea that things change and morph over time. Recombination is the idea that we often combine different aspects of things together to create new solutions. So can we harness this power of evolution for the sake of optimization and machine learning, right? Um, and we, the simple answer is yes, we can. And that's what the field of evolutionary computation or EC is devoted to. It's a series of machine learning methods that draw inspiration from Darwinian evolution and Mendelian genetics. And there are a number of variants of evolutionary computation. There's a whole bunch of things. You'll hear about things like genetic algorithms, genetic programming and evolutionary strategies, um, ant colony optimization algorithms, right? But almost all of these follow, share the following traits. They have some sort of population-based search method. And what I mean by that is rather than, for instance, the decision tree algorithm, which generates one solution to the problem, they generate a population of solutions to the problem, right? There is a set of random changes to the solution. Something that modifies them randomly over time to try and make them better. And there is a selection based on fitness, right? Individuals that are doing better at solving the problem continue to persist in the system, right? And that fitness could be implicit, and by that we mean it could be that they're competing against each other, the solutions are to solve the problem, or explicit, where there is a function that is given by some explicit argument as to which algorithm, uh, which, which, fun which solution is doing the best. Uh, there's tons of examples of EC in the literature, um, evolutionary program, evolutionary strategies, genetic programming. I'm going to talk primarily about one particular one where I wrote my dissertation, which was genetic algorithms, which was developed my, by my, um, uh, my, uh, my advisor, John Holland, uh, back in the early 1970s, right? Um, and it's kind of, it's a very easy one to understand, and it's very powerful in many respects. So that's the one we're going to talk about today. So what is a genetic algorithm? A genetic algorithm is very simple. We're going to come up with a way to encode our problem such that we can generate a random string that solves the problem. Now, it may not solve the problem very well, but it will solve the problem in some way. So you can imagine, for instance, uh, a regression problem where the string is the coefficients of the regressor line, right? And so I can generate a whole bunch of random uh, regressor coefficients, and I can see which line best fits the data that I actually have, right? And that would be one example of it. So I'm going to generate that population. I'm then going to evaluate which um, solution does the best. 
And now I'm going to go through a process of inheritance with variation, which means I'm going to create a new population that inherits from this parent population, uh, but has some changes. Maybe it has some mutation, maybe it has some recombination in it. Um, and that's basically where we're going to go in the uh, next step of the, of the phase, right? So that's the basic idea behind a genetic algorithm. I'm going to pause here because I'm going to go through each of those stages in detail in the next talk.